creator of Farvel Knitwear. I design knitting patterns, I have my own buttons now and I've also started dyeing yarn. So it's growing into this whole big thing. Thank you for watching and welcome back. If you're a returning viewer, welcome if you are completely new. I'm glad you've come to join me for this little chat about knitting. It's been a minute. I've been on holiday. June was the last month of my vintage shop, as in a brick and mortar shop. It's still online. I'm still working on it. And they, as I said in the previous episode, the rent for the shop front was doubling as the contract expired and so I can continue unfortunately. We're still online. If vintage is your jam, go check out Fabel Vintage on Etsy. Uh, but that's not really related to this. So yeah, but that took up a lot of time moving, packing everything, just making everything as organised as possible so that it would be easy to continue online. And then that was pretty much all of June. Uh, that was the last month and then a week packing and cleaning and all that stuff. And then we went on holiday. Me and my boyfriend drove around the west coast of Norway, which is stunning. We're both from the west coast, I'm from the northwest and he's from Bergen. So we drove to Bergen and then we went to Oskvoll, which is where his family has a little cabin. And then back to Bergen and then we drove through Voss and Fjallan, Stryn, went up to Ålesund and then across Dovre and then back down. We were on the, we, I think we, yeah, it was two weeks pretty much to the date from when we left when we came back and it was amazing. The weather was gorgeous, which is usually, <laughs> it's usually not gorgeous for two consecutive weeks on the west coast so that was uh, we were dealt a very lucky hand there but yes that's been happening and so i've been vacant basically <laughs> uh, if you want to see some pictures of the gorgeous norwegian, norwegian landscape you can check out my instagram which is fabul knitwear i'm also a fabul knitwear on ravelry although i'm not very active on ravelry which i probably should be i think the thing Oh, and also, on, in, as I'm talking about Ravelry, I stand with Ravelry and the marginalised they are attempting to protect with their ban on white supremacy. Just so it's out there. If anyone ever wonders about my sort of personal position and uh, through me the position of my company, uh, where we stand in regards to basically what's happening in the fiber community. I have now made a statement page on fabulnetwear.com where I address uh, discrimination and sizing issues, animal welfare. Uh, and if anything is unclear, drop me an email on fabulnetwear at gmail.com uh, if there's something you want me to make a statement about uh, that I have ignorantly missed. Uh, Again, let me know. I think it's important that we, as consumers, we should know where where the companies we spend our money on stand, and whether or not you choose to spend your money there is completely up to you, obviously. Um, I would rather leave my money with somewhere that I know, uh, with a company I know run there, do their work ethically in regards to human rights and animal welfare, and anything really so i think that's important you, i am of the opinion that you can't or shouldn't separate uh, your company from your personal opinion so to speak so if uh, uh, if woody allen pedophile i'm not too keen on his films easy as that there are so many other films i could rather watch so yeah, I don't really watch Woody Allen films. Uh, I don't, I never would have, I don't listen to R. Kelly. Uh, I wouldn't anyway, but if that was my kind of music, I would rather spend my money on someone who doesn't uh, hold discriminating human views, basically. 
being thinking that you can separate these things just because it suits you is really ignorant and I have this talk <laughs> argument with people all the time I've always been of this opinion uh, simply because there are so many options okay so you don't watch Woody Allen you can still watch pretty much most other directors work don't think Peter Jackson has any allegations of pedophilia against him watch Peter Jackson <laughs> or Martin Scorsese or literally anyone who doesn't who hasn't done committed uh, crimes and are being uh, forgiven for them because they're famous or because well that's his life it's not his work but supporting someone who when you support someone who commit wrongs you're also enabling them to continue doing what they're doing because they're not being held accountable so anyway long ramble as to why i think statements uh, matter when they come when there are topics that are being discussed and that's important in which in the community in which your business operates in my case the fiber community which there has been a lot of uh, things happening i'm not going to call it a discussion because i think that's a really stupid word for it it shouldn't be a discussion it should be a case of this is what's wrong and then going, oh shit that's really bad let's make sure sure <laughs> let's work on stopping it instead of going well you see my opinion is that it's not racist fuck off so i think the discussion is just a really weird word for it but yeah the dis uh, people are calling it the discussion but yeah wow that was a ramble i think i was clear it's been a while i can always I mean, you, you can probably tell as well when it's been a while since I did a podcast or when travelling abroad because I'm a bit, I stumble a bit more with my English in comparison to when I speak it more regularly. So if anything was unclear, uh, drop me a message. Let's just start with what I've been working on. I think this uh, resonates with a lot of people for summer. Oh my god, we're gonna have a break, I'm gonna knit all the things. I need to pack all my yarn because I'm probably gonna knit through it really quickly and then you end up knitting like five rows for your day. I hardly I hardly knit anything for the first week that we were away. And then I got some more time after that. But before we left, I finished my Delacorte cardigan. I've shown you this in the works before and it is love it this is the delicate card again it's my own pattern it's one of the patterns from the hellos collection of last autumn i knit it in bonnie which is one of my bases it's my blue face leicester fingering weight yarn and the colorway is duskwood i love how this knit up I also used my own buttons for this. This is the Nymphaea button in gold and emerald. And I think the green in contrast with this sort of dusky, greyish, purpley blue is really nice. It fits really well. Uh, the gauge for this is slightly tighter than the Pickles Moon Nose Weed, which is or Pure Wool, which is the recommended yarn for the pattern so I simply went up I couldn't I oh, can't speak apparently I knit a small for my brown my sort of autumn one and I knew this is going to be tighter and my so I knit a medium and it fits really well I could have knit a small I would just have, have to mind my gauge or something which I'm really bad at my, the gauge for the sleeves was really off it was tiny I have no idea what happened so they aren't as billowy and it's complete I've never had that issue before so I don't know what happened I was it was I was knitting this when I was moving out of the shop so I was probably just insanely stressed uh, and I've never had issues with knitting too tightly so it must have been that 
maybe, if, if we're looking for excuses. The Delacour cardigan is a square necklined uh, cardigan. It has, it's meant to have slightly more billowy sleeves than this, uh, but because my gauge was crazy tight, it has, let me see how they look. Let me show you how they look. Like it's still got a nice amount of bishopy goof here, but it's not as loose as in people's pure wool or people's when we're not eat. But as I said, it's the recommended yarn. However, it works beautifully. I could have knit the body in a small. I'm sure I could have. I was just unsure because I knit the sleeves first. I usually do that because I don't really. I like knitting sleeves the least, and so if I knit the body first and then I have to do the sleeves, it feels like it's taking forever. But if I do the sleeves first and then knit the body, and then I can just pop the sleeves on and I'm nearly done. And just a psychological trick. So I knit the sleeves first and because the cage was so off, I just decided to knit the body, like the bodice, in the size up. I could have just done this one because the gauge was just like a stitch off for that, which is, I think it's fine. So that was that. I really love these colours. So yeah, this is the Delacour cardigan knit in the body. I have, I don't have any more Bonnie in Duskwood. I do have Bonnie in Mage Blue which I am dying to cast off something in. That would be really nice in Mage Bloom. And I'm thinking, I really want to Minerva cardigan in Mage Bloom because it's quite neutral, but it's got those speckles. I think that would be really nice. I've also finished, because I'm gonna show you a pattern that's coming this autumn, late autumn. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm just not gonna be as uptight about when and how I show you things. Uh, because it's just a lot easier this way <laughs> and I'm just crazy so yeah this autumn we'll see the release of a new collection which is yet unnamed this is called Diagon Alley Jumper <sighs> this is knit in Elder which is my non superwash organic merino DK um, it's a slightly more toothy merino, which is nice because it holds stretch so well. This is the colour Astronomy Tower. I'm not going to go away into detail about all the attributes of it. This was just a super quick sneak peek. And then I will show you properly when I do the proper reveal. Uh, I also have another one, which I love. This is also the Diagon Alley Jumper in Elder Phoenix Egg. And oh my goodness, the way this colorway knits up is everything. It has a golden base and then like a molten golden base. And then it has uh, speckles and variegations of a deeper like molten orange and hints of like ashy brown, which is why it's called Phoenix Egg. I love this. Oh my God. I finished it when we were on the trip, like the last week, which was great because I actually got to wear it for a couple of days when it was a bit windy at the coast. And this was perfect to wear. Like I said, the yarn is a bit more toothy than a normal merino, uh, which I quite like because it, uh, the finished result is a bit more woolly. And as I also said, it holds structure really well, whereas some merinos can have a really gorgeous drape, but then they kind of sag a bit if you have more structural elements instead of like a nice flowy look. So yeah, this is the diagonal jumper. Other, the, boop, 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 boop. another pattern that is coming in that collection, which I have shown you, is the bureau, the, boop, oh, I some shit. I'm clearly an idiot today. Uh, the pattern that I've previously shown you that's also going to be in that collection is the Burrow Cardigan. It's, it's originally the Ginevra Cardigan, which is based on the Ginevra tee, which I'm wearing. Um, 
but due to changes having to be made to make it work in wool instead of um, plant fibre, I decided and I just felt super inspired when uh, making it appropriate for wool. And I had so many ideas in collection, in the collection, so many ideas in regards to how I can make it into a collection. So I did that, and it's no longer called the Ginevra Tea or Ginevra Cardigan, I should say. <laughs> Uh, but the bureau cardigan. So that's the Diagon Alley jumper. We have the bureau cardigan and <clears throat> we will have Owlery jumper and one yet unnamed. So that's all very exciting, I think. Um, yeah, I'm uh, these the ones. The two others are currently only on sketches and in my head. Uh, but that's coming this late autumn. Uh, a collection coming very soon is the Summer Tales collection, which will consist of the Sea Maiden dress, the Sun Summoner blouse, and the Capulet blouse. It's taken a bit longer to get it out to you than I originally anticipated just because of summer. Um, quite a lot of my test knitters aren't done yet which is fine, in summer I think uh, things just take longer than you think they will so it's just, it's just so much to do which is fine, it'll be, happy. it'll be ready when it's ready hopefully I'll publish the first one next week, we'll see uh, I just need the testers to finish and then when that's done it's all good pictures are taken and everything's written up so super excited to show you that, I'm going to do a proper episode on that collection when the time comes so stay tuned. I've shown you the uh, c dress on Instagram already, so I'm picturing it. Uh, very excited. And this week I have been working on knitting up the Ginevra tea and I'll soon do the Hedwig tank in a new yarn because Pickles Boo Boo, which was the recommended yarn, is discontinued. And <laughs> it's ridiculous having a pattern in a yarn that doesn't exist anymore. So I've been working on knitting it up in Pickles Organic Cotton, which I really like. It has a really cool, gorgeous te texture to it. And the cotton is sourced from, I think it was Peru. Uh, I'll fact check myself. And um, it supports uh, one of the poorest communities in that town, uh, giving those families who work the access to water and healthcare and school, all that stuff, so it's really great. And cotton's not necessarily great, so when using cotton I think it's important to know where your cotton is sourced and how it's been uh, produced. So yeah, uh, this I've not blocked this yet, so it's quite uneven. I don't knit very evenly in cotton, so, and it doesn't have buttons. <laughs> I'm going to buy buttons today. So this is the Ginevra Tea knit up in organic cotton. As you can see I have had to add the ribbed button band all the way across which I didn't have to do for this in Boo Boo which is a bamboo just because of how the fabric acts so this stays in shape whereas the cotton rolls over if you don't give it a proper edging. So I've done that, I like it, I don't mind at all. Uh, I've knit this two sizes up from what I would usually wear just because I really want to see how it looks with a bit of positive ease because then a lot of people prefer that and it would be great to show you how that looks as well um, so I'll take pictures of both because I'm also knitting that I started yesterday one in my size which should have no ease or maybe a bit negative ease we'll see in this amazing hazelnut tea, praline, praline, no idea, I have zero idea how you pronounce that shade, which I think is stunning. So I'll be able to take pictures of both no ease and positive ease for this, which I'm really excited about and I will release it as a Ginevra Tea 2.1, 2.0 I should say, 2, <laughs> volume 2, version 2. And everyone who's bought it already will obviously present the new version. 
Uh, the gauge is different for this, just because of the yarn. So I'm having to rewrite the stitch count, uh, but I really, I think it's perfect for that yarn. So that's why that's happening. Uh, once that's done, I'm going to test up the uh, Hedwig tank in the same yarn, which I also think is going to work beautifully. I think I'm going to go for white, just because Hedwig is white. But I'm going to heading down to Pickles Lake today, and I'll see if another colour strikes my fancy or not. Uh, and that tank should have just very slight positivity, so I'm only going to knit that in one size. Um, after that. I wanted to show you just some things that I want in it, what's in my plans. After that, I am going to knit. Even though I've not shown you the Sun Summoner blouse yet, I will simply tell you I have knitted in white and yellow. So it's a colour work uh, blouse. And I'm going to do Forbidden Forest and Phoenix Egg. How amazing is this combo? It is everything. So yeah, the, this is my Bonnie DK base, uh, which I think is going to be perfect. The pattern calls for Pickles Summer Wool, which is a wool, lamb's wool and cotton blend, which is great for Norwegian summer. But I just also really want to test it in one of my bases to see what it looks like and also because these together. Okay, so this is going to be the main colour and this is going to be the pattern colour. And I'm very excited to start knitting it. Uh, and I'm really excited to show you the pattern very, very soon. I'm also going to knit a Capulet blouse, which is also one of the patterns upcoming patterns from the Summer Tales collection. I'm not showing you that yet either. But I'm, I think, yeah, if you want to look at the hashtag, some of my testers have started posting. I'm going to knit it in a Phoenix egg because I'm clearly, <laughs> I'm obsessed with this colour. Um, so yeah, uh, that's a one coloured blouse with some cables and a sweetheart neckline and it's very romantic and I think yeah when I obsess over a colour I just go there full out uh, full speed so that's I'm gonna knit that after the sun sun the blouse and then I really want to knit a do not scoff that. Okay, two seconds. Book. <laughs> this book like a week before May 17th which is the Norwegian constitutional holiday when we wear our blue night and I discovered this book which is a book where you basically knit yourself a woolen jacket for your blue night mine has a cape which is stupidly heavy so unless the weather's really bad I don't wear it because I'd have to carry it around like this whereas a woolen jacket it's a lot easier to take on and off and also they look gorgeous and I started and then I was kind of giving myself a rash because I'm stressing because I only had like a week of four days or something to do it and I was kind of giving myself heartburn <laughs> so I had to stop and just come to terms with the fact that this year wasn't the year which was fine because it, the weather was gorgeous I'm just going to show you a picture I'm not going to show you any pages with like how amazing is this? I would wear this on a daily basis as well. And there are lots of different options for uh, colours and patterns you can use to suit your boonard. And anything. I just think this book is amazing. By the way, it's called Strik Boonardskofta and it's by Merete Norheim Myrdal. It's a gorgeous book. <laughs> I'm a bit surprised it's not been done before because it's genius. I really like this. I think the white base is gorgeous. I'm going to go for the 
these colours. So this is going to be the base colour and then for the cuffs and the neckline I'm going to do a combination of these. My bimad is like a mossy foresty green and a deep navy and the shirt is white linen. So I think these are going to be great and I think the white main colour is going to create a really nice contrast as well instead of just going dark blue as the skirt is. This is Roma Fin Ul Petetu. It's really nice wool it's a bit toothy which i think is going to be great for what it's an outer garment so it needs to be able to withstand some wind which this kind of wool is great for and it's just really nice it has really nice wool in general so this is gonna happen i need one of these for next year and i'm probably gonna wear it regardless of the weather because that's what us knitters are like. I've also just realised that the window was open and I think every single large vehicle in Oslo has driven past, uh, has driven by for the past half hour, 20 minutes. It's probably been really noisy and I apologise. I uh, should have I should have noticed the window was open because the window is right behind the camera. So I apologise for any traffic noises, which I'm sure there, there have been quite a bit of. My bad. Apart from that, I have a very exciting product reveal coming very soon. It's a new button. I already have the Nymphaya button, which I've shown you before. And there will be a new button, a button called Regina. And I'll do a separate video for it. So that it's easier to find when you search. And just to keep things simple, that's coming very, very soon. I just need to take pictures and it'll be ready. I suffice to say, I love it. And I hope you guys do too. So stay tuned for that. If you want more details, follow me on Instagram. I post everything there. That's where I'm most active. And you can also sign up for my newsletter on fabnetwear.com. Uh, there's a light box that pops up and you can sign up for your newsletter and you'll get a discount when you sign up and I'll post all updates and just discounts and stuff to come will be there as well. So if you're interested and want to stay up to date, do that. I will, when I do shop updates, I'll put in all the colourways that are coming, the bases, everything. So that's the place to go if you crave more information. I also have the Fable Submitting 2019 Knit Along happening, which is a knit along where you can knit anything that any of my patterns or any patterns that I have mentioned on this podcast. The only rule is you have to cast on and cast off during 2019. You can enter as many times as you want with as many patterns as you want as long as you finish the objects. And there is a complete list of patterns you can knit at the in the Ravelry group. So head on to the Fable Submitting Ravelry group and there is a cow thread there. You can also enter on Instagram using that hashtag. So do that, there will be prizes, there will be yarn, there will be buttons, who knows what else there will be. This autumn I will be vending at three different yarn shows or festivals. The first one being Trondheimstig Festival, which is happening from the 30th of August until August, uh, September 1st. Uh, and I'm very excited about it. The next one is Bergenstig Festival, which is from the 27th of September to the 29th of September. And then the third one is Stavangerstig Festival, which is happening from the 18th to the 20th of October which is super exciting. I've never done like proper festivals before. I've vended at one show, which is Sriknes Market, which happened this April and it was amazing. So I've just signed up for everything. <laughs> and there's also, my yarn will also be available at Sriknes Pop-Up, which I'm not sure what the name of it is. Maybe it's that, maybe it's something else. And it's happening at the beginning of November. I won't be there, but my yarn will be. So she, they're having a pop-up with loads of it and they're getting produce and items for sale from loads of different vendors. And I'm definitely going to be there, but I'm not going to, 
I'm not going to be the one selling my yarn there, so to speak, if that makes any sense. And so that a lot of things happening this autumn. Super excited about it, and I hope you guys are. I can't wait to meet you if you're going to any of these festivals. Please do come say hi. There is no necessary shopping, just a hello is more than enough. So I'm very excited about it, and I hope if you're coming, let me know. I'd love to know who's going and which one I'm going to see. And also, if you are going and there's any specific bases or colorways that you want me to bring, again, write it in the comment box, send me a message, contact me in any way, just don't call my phone. <laughs> don't call me. But apart from that, uh, you can get in touch however you wish and let me know what you fancy, and I will do my very best to cater it to your wants and needs. I hope you enjoy your summer. Get loads of time for knitting, which I'm trying to do, so I hope you get more knitting time than I have thus far. And just enjoy yourself. I'll see you very soon. Bye.